is 410 megapixels just a bit too much for a backside illuminated full frame sensor? Is it just a silly idea? Well, someone should tell Canon that because they just announced one. So will this 410 megapixel sensor be coming to Canon's long awaited high resolution camera? Or could it wait three years for the Canon EOS R5 Mark III or even the R1 Mark II? Well, I've got the answers to these questions in this video. But first, I have a simple and yet humble request. Please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps this channel grow, but most importantly, it keeps you informed on the latest camera gear. Canon announced that it's developed a CMOS sensor with 410 megapixels. That's 24,592 by 6,704 pixels, which is the largest ever pixel count ever achieved on a 35 millimeter full frame sensor. That's correct, folks. This is real. This isn't fake. This isn't some sort of early April Fool's joke, although it would make a pretty good one. Canon has officially announced a 410 megapixel sensor. See, look, right here, I'm not making this up. This isn't some sort of patent application. It's real. And for video aficionados where 8K is so 1970s, you're going to be able to record 24K. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 24K video. Okay, to give you an idea, to put that in context, that's 12 times the amount of information that we get in 8K. Are you, <laughs> are you ready for this? 198 times as much information as we get. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, hold on a minute here. It's, <laughs> it's, 190, <laughs> it's 198 times, times more information than we get in full HD. That's right, 198 times. That's a huge amount of information. All joking aside, whatever camera is going to be powered by this new sensor, it's going to need Gen 4 CF Express cards at the very least. No worries, Canon's got you covered, but there are some technical hurdles that we should talk about first. As the data readout speed of the CMOS sensor tends to take a little longer, as the number of pixels increases, achieving a CMOS sensor with a super high pixel count requires advanced signal processing technology. The newly developed sensor employs a backside illuminated stacked formation, in which the pixel segment and the signal processing segment are interlayered and also include a redesigned circuitry pattern. As a result, the sensor is capable of achieving a super high readout speed of, and get ready for this, because this is the point which we have the drum roll, the crescendo to what this chip is capable of. Well, sensor, it's still, I know it's still using circuitry and chip and all, anyhow, here we go. The sensor is capable of achieving a super high readout speed of 3,280 megapixels per second, delivering video at 8 frames per second. So, did you catch that? They're talking about video here at 8 frames per second. Now, to put that in context, the current acceptable frame rate for cinema is around 24 frames per second. It changes, it's not always that, but by and large, it's 24 frames per second. This is one third of that. And I know what you're thinking. It's not going to turn heads for video. But for much of history, 8 frames per second in stills was considered blazing fast. It's only in the last 12 years where the frame rates per second, well, have exploded. I think it's fair to say that I've driven that point home that this sensor, 410 megapixels, while fast as it is at moving an awful lot of data, when it comes to video, yeah, it, there's no real application here. But what it does indicate is that we have a sensor that's capable of a very high resolution. For those people looking for a successor to the 5D RS or the 5D S, I keep getting those number, those, those the badging all mixed up, but essentially it was a 50 megapixel sensor capable at not a very high frame rate. So 410 megapixels at eight frames per second for stills, for photo only, well, that might just work. So it's very unlikely then that we could see the sensor in the upcoming Canon EOS R5 Mark III, unless of course they can get the video up to 24 frames per second. And the R1 Mark II, the same thing. But the long-awaited high-resolution mirrorless camera, 
Well, the performance indicates that it would be perfect for Canon's long-awaited high-resolution camera. But, and this is a big but here, folks, the cost of the sensor would make this camera very cost-prohibitive. Going back to Canon's announcement, the sensor is expected to be used in applications that demand extreme resolutions in various markets, including surveillance, medicine, and industry. So it's unlikely that Canon would deem the EOS R5 Mark III or the EOS R1 Mark II or a high-resolution full-frame censored camera as industry. But still, you have to marvel at the numbers. 410 megapixels, able to achieve 8 frames per second. That's something like 3.3 billion pixels per second. That's extremely... That's, that's a lot of data moving very fast, generating a lot of heat. Now, in the next three years, could we see, I, I don't know, maybe a 100 megapixel sensor or a 200 megapixel sensor that's capable of 24 frames per second video and maybe 20 frames per second stills? Yeah, no, it's certainly plausible because we can take these numbers and bring them back a little bit. So instead of 410 megapixels, let's go with 100 megapixels. Well, that eight frames per second now could go up to, well, 30 frames per second or even a little bit more. And that's for video. So 24, 25, and 30 frames per second video. And in terms of stills, to get really good detail without any blur, you're probably looking at somewhere between 20 and 30 frames per second raw. That's, that's pretty impressive. What this sensor shows for us is that while it's a little bit ridiculous for a stills hybrid camera, it shows us where the technology is, where Canon's taken the technology and that a 100 megapixel or even, let's say, a 150 megapixel high-resolution censored camera at the high end, well, it's certainly plausible. And that in itself is quite exciting. But the one thing we are going to need is some Gen 4 CF Express Type B cards. And for that 400 megapixel sensor, well, maybe it's going to need some CF Express Type C cards or another form of NVRAM. But I definitely think that Gen 4 CF Express Type B should be more than fast enough for, let's say, a 100 to 150 megapixel stills hybrid camera from Canon's lineup. Dare I say it show up as the R4 or the R2? Or could it be? No, I, I think those numbers just I think those numbers deserve to have a camera there. Now, in the past, Canon took the 5 series and just came out with a different 5 series camera, but it's going to have a completely different sensor, a completely different architecture. I would call it the I would call it the R2. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Now, I just have one more ask of you. If you are looking at purchasing camera gear, um, bodies, lenses, or accessories, um, and you're looking at purchasing for Adorama, b and or Amazon.com, then please consider using my affiliate links down below in the description. I've already got about 20 cameras and lenses on sale from Canon and Nikon. By using those affiliate links, you're literally viewer supporting this channel, you're literally keeping the lights on, both the key light and the fill lights, as well as the accent lights behind me. I can't thank you enough for your support over the years. Uh, it's very much appreciated. And I promised you, as long as you guys are helping with the, me with the, the affiliate links, I can promise you I'm not going to put any 30-second to 33-minute sponsorship ad at the beginning or the first half of this video. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week, a great weekend, and we'll see you again soon.